Jesus' name we pray. The Lord bless everyone. And the Lord make use of you as he made use of those servants of God in the Bible in Jesus' name. And your ministry will have a definite mark upon the people the Lord connects you with in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for bringing us together as your children, your servants, and our leaders in the church. We're asking, Lord, that tonight you send your word to everyone and we receive the word and the word will benefit everyone in Jesus' name. Use every one of us to your glory. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. God bless you. Consider we're coming to Exodus chapter 18 tonight and we're looking at verse 1. Exodus chapter 18, verse 1. When Jethro the priest of Midian, Moses' father-in-law, heard of all that God had done for Moses and for Israel, his people, and that the Lord had brought Israel out of Egypt. Then he came. He came to them, he came to Moses, because uh, Moses had been separated from the wife and uh, the two sons for all this period from the beginning of his coming into Egypt and doing all those miracles and then coming out of Egypt and going through all those uh, steps, Moses and the wife had been separated. As Bible students, you know why. Now, when Jethro, the father-in-law, knew that they were now nearby, that he is the children of Israel on their way to the promised land, he came and brought the wife. And he was a peacemaker. The Lord will make us peacemakers in Jesus' name. And Moses did not say, no point, no issue. I'm already beyond 80 years of age. And what do I need, uh, you know, her for? Let her go back and stay with you. It will mean there's still a remnant of a uh, conflict and disagreement and instantly. I don't want to leave with that woman alone. And when God sends people, counselors, and uh, peacemakers to us, we should listen and then humble ourselves and receive the word of the Lord. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. But tonight we're looking at an important thing that has Jethro fellowship with Moses and then saw everything that was going on. He saw that he needed counsel and he counseled him. And uh, Moses took uh, the counsel. But we're now in the new covenant. Always remember, whenever you read the old covenant, the old testament, you ask yourself, that was what was done then. Who is my counselor now? Who is my commander now? And who is going to lead me now? As we look at the Bible, number one, we'll see Jesu. Number two, we'll see Jehovah Lord God of heaven. Number three, we'll see Jesus. And that's why we're looking at the subject tonight. We're looking at Jesus, our great counselor, commander, not Jethro. Jethro did good. He did well. It is some time and we cannot transport that everything and I come to the New Testament and come to the New Covenant and say that sage, no. Don't stay far back there at the time of Jethro. Now Christ has come and he is our counselor. I want you to look at Isaiah chapter 9. We're looking at verse 6. It says in Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God. God, the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. He is now our peacemaker. He reconciles us with the Almighty God and will make peace with God. And then His Word becomes the very source and the foundation of counseling for us. Look at uh, Isaiah chapter 55. I'm reading from verse 4. Isaiah 55 verse 4. Behold, I have given him for a witness to the people, a leader 
and commander of the people. Now the Father, God in heaven, has given us the believers of today. He has given us Jesus Christ. He is our leader and he is the witness from the Father and he is our commander. So today we're looking at the message, Jesus, our great counselor, commander, not Jethro. We're dividing the message to three parts. Number one, the mindful, essential wisdom of Jethro. All scripture has been given by inspiration of God, and all scripture is good. It's good for doctrine, and it's good for us in our Christian lives. It's good for us in our Christian ministry. So we're not throwing away the counsel of Jethro, the mindful, essential wisdom of Jethro. But then we go beyond that, and we come to number two, the most exalted word of Jehovah. You'll find as you look at the life of Moses as a leader, Moses as a, as a person, a servant of God, he'd say, thus says the Lord, thus says the Lord, thus says the Lord. He didn't take a Jethro at the final authority in every area of ministry. Good counsel, and good understanding, a good uh, peacemaker, but Moses depended on the exalted word of Jehovah. Number three, the more excellent way in Jesus. We've seen this, we've seen that, but now I show you a more excellent way. As we come to the new covenant, we come to number three, the more excellent way in Jesus. Let's come to number one. Number one, we're looking at the mindful, essential wisdom of Jethro. We divide this to three parts. We already know the passage. And we're looking at number one, the scriptural counsel of Jethro to Moses. Number two, the salient condition of justifying the move. You want to, you know, take a move. You want to obey that. You want to give into that. There is the salient condition of justifying the move. Number three, the short-sighted consideration of Jethro before Moses. The short-sighted con uh, consideration of Jethro before Moses. Let's look at number one. Number one is the scriptural counsel of Jethro to Moses in Exodus chapter 18, reading from verse 19. Exodus chapter 18, reading from verse 19, Hearken now unto my voice. I will give thee counsel. It was upfront. It was very clear. I see what you're doing. I see your mode of oppression. I see your method. I see your zeal. But you're wear out. And so he said, I will counsel thee. Father-in-law. Son-in-law, I will counsel thee. Although Moses was already more than 80 years of age, the man, the father of his wife, was older. And he said, I will counsel thee. But please remember, please remember that Jethro was not born again. Saved, redeemed, cleansed by the blood of the Lamb, but he arched the wisdom of elderly people, the wisdom of gentle people. And because he was priest of Midian, he was a leader in his own realm, but not in a Christian way, and not in a way that Moses understood that were redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Always think about that. There is wisdom of the world in administration. There is wisdom of the world in natural things. And so, as uh, Jethro saw him, he knew you're already 80 years of age and more and you are sitting down there and from morning till evening you are doing this naturally, you will wear out. But understand, he didn't have the factor of the promise and the power and the health 
plan of God. Please understand, uh, for us, as your days, so shall your strength be. So we cannot transport everything Jethro has said in his natural common sense, in his natural wisdom, and in his uh, background as the priest of people that do not know the promises and the power of God and the healing plan and the health plan of the Lord for the children of Israel. So all he could say is, this thing will wear you out. Well, it should have been worn out even at that age of 80, but it wasn't worn out yet. So when you take the counsel, understand the perspective from which Jethro is talking. Understand the promise you have, the power that keeps you, and the plan of God for your life. But then let's come back to him. He says, I will, I will give thee counsel, and God shall be with thee. Be thou for the people to God word, that thou mayest bring the causes unto God. Look at verse 20 there. In verse 20 he says, and thou shalt teach them ordinances and laws, and shall show them the way wherein the must walk, wherein they must walk. That is from day to day as we are walking with God. I'm not sure he knows the desire of God, how well to walk. Walk before me and, the, and be thou perfect. You go and ask God about that, the kind of work you ought to have and the perfect work you ought to have. I don't think he knew about sanctification, the sanctified life you ought to live, but whatever it is, teach them the way that God demands they must walk and the work that they must do. He didn't know the work they will do, but he said, I leave that in your hand. Moses, I need to build the tabernacle. Okay, hear from God. I'm just telling you, when you hear from God and he tells you the work to do, tell them the work they must do. And he wasn't talking of, um, you know, what we do as that now. He was talking of whatever it is God wants you to do. He didn't know about, uh, you know, evangelism, about edification, about uh, God has raised up the apostle, the prophet, the evangelist, the pastor, and the teacher for the perfecting of the saints. He didn't know all those things, all those details. Get the detail from God. Let them know what you have got from God as to the work they must do. And then in verse 21, in verse 21, he tells us, he says, moreover, thou shalt provide out of all the people able men. You understand his perspective? He didn't understand about circumcision, that their flesh must have been circumcised. He wasn't an Israelite. He didn't know that. All he knew is that the people you call and the people you give the work to, he was thinking of the physical, of the natural. They must be able men. They are able to bear the heat of the day. How about circumcision? <laughs> you didn't know about that. How about if they're going to serve, they must love God with all their heart all their soul, all their mind. Moses knew that. Jethro did not bother himself for that. He didn't know doctrine. He didn't know that you love the Lord with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind. He didn't know that you must not, you know, worship uh, like the medians. You must be separate from the people. I have severed you from the people. Jethro didn't know that. All he knew is that, are you going to select anybody for the work? They must be able men, such as fear God, men of truth, hating covetousness, and place such over them understand the qualifications he gave. They were, you know, just the basic thing that a natural man will think about. He has skill. He has ability. He must be an able man, an able woman, and then he must fear God. Whatever that fearing God means to you, Moses, and means to the children of Israel, he must fear God. He must be man of truth. What kind of truth? Moral truth? 
He didn't know about evangelical truth. He didn't know about the truth that saves us, but they must be men of truth. And then he says they must hate covetousness. Of course, they should know that. And so that they'll not be fraudulent, and not be taking things from the people. And as we look at those qualifications, how limited they were. As you come and compare that to the New Testament, and then you know we must be saved. We must be sanctified. Anyone that bears the vessel of the Lord must be holy, that if any man purge himself from these, he shall be sanctified and meet for the master's shoes. Jethro did not know that. He counseled to the limit of his understanding and placed such over them that they be rulers of thousands that they will be rulers of hundreds and rulers of fifties and rulers of tens. And then it says in verse 22, in verse 22 it tells us, and let them judge the people at all seasons, and it shall be that every great matter they shall bring unto thee. Please understand, he didn't define the great matter to Moses. Whatever you judge great above the people, let them bring that to you. It was for Moses to understand that's a great matter. That's the eternal matter. That one relates with our relationship with God. Because Jethro never heard that whosoever has sinned against me, him will I blot out of my book. Jethro did not know about the book of life and about what makes a person to remain in the book of life. He says, I leave that in your hand. You judge as to what is the great matter. We understand now that except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. That's a great matter. We know now, blessed at the pure in heart, for they shall see God. That's a great matter. We know now, follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. That's a great matter. We know now, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. We are to decide that this is a great matter. That one is a minor thing. That one is a non-essential. That one, whether you do it up, you do it down, does not matter before God. That's a small thing. I don't want to get myself involved with that. And it's the Spirit of God that tells us today, that's great. That's indispensable. That's essential. You must get rid of that thing. If you're going to get to the kingdom of God, but Moses, I leave that in your hand. Decide the great matter and every small matter and Moses ought to decide that's a small matter that will not hinder people from getting to the land of Canaan. That's a small matter that will not, you know, hinder them from looking at the pillar of cloud and the pillar of fire and making progress. That's a small matter. That one is not going to affect their relationship with God. That's a small matter. That one is not to make anyone stumble and then fall and fail and then backslide completely. You handle that. That he said all the small matters he didn't decide for him the small matters he wasn't an Israelite he didn't know the call of God upon Moses but he said all those small matters thou shalt they shall judge so it shall be easier for thee for thyself and they shall bear the burden with thee amen the body in, they'll bear the body in with thee. But Moses understood there are bodies of the leader that no other person can bear the teaching of the people. Because God said, call all the children, all the women, all the men, everybody, and the people that are even a born slaves in your land, get them together and teach them. The whole word of God. That's a burden Moses could not give 
unto anyone. He himself understood. Jethro did not know that when it had not happened, but it was going to happen when Moses went to the mountain to get the law. From the Lord, only about, you know, 40 days, that's less than six weeks, uh, uh, Aaron already led the people astray. So Moses will understand uh, they are bearing the body with thee, but you are the one God called. And he said, tell Pharaoh, let my son go. You'll take these people, you'll take them to the land, flowing with honey, uh, milk and honey. Make sure they get to that promised land. That is a body. In Moses, he could not dedicate to another one. But whatever other body they can bear, which will release you, to actually face the burden of taking them to the land of promise, you can delegate the things you can, and you watch very well, because if Aaron could lead the whole nation into backsliding and idolatry, you have to, you know, look at it for yourself, which one is a burden you can delegate, and which one is a burden you cannot delegate. We're coming to number two here. Number two is the salient condition of justifying the move. I've given you counsel. I've told you this is what to do. And I've told you the people will choose the people you will commit things to. Now, it is a salient condition here to justify the move. I'm telling you, we're looking at Exodus chapter 18, looking at verse 23. It says, If thou shalt do this sin, and God command thee so. Thank you, Jethro. He didn't impose his stature and his position as the father-in-law, as an older person, as an elderly counselor. I've told you what to do, but I wasn't there when God called you. I didn't know the terms of your calling. I didn't know the parameters of your ministry. And I don't know what God will judge you on on the final day. But as an elderly person, as a natural person, as a person that observes, and then I analyze, and I have some understanding of administration, how we can people management because of that background I've given you now this counsel but if thou shalt do these things and God command thee so uh, we're not talking of you know all these uh, minor minor counseling and all that we're talking about a man that God has called and is taking millions of people to the promised land and so number one we should be very careful how we counsel them we don't know what God has told them to do we don't know the vision we don't know the goal we don't know the destiny we don't know all the parameters of, of everything the Lord has told him and so whenever we give Give our offer of counsel, of advice, of administrative help. We we'll say, if God command thee so, then thou shalt be able to endure. And all these people shall also go to their place in peace. I pray the Spirit of God will be with us every time. And the Spirit of God will lead and guide us in the thing He has called us to do. Yes, we're open to counseling. We're open to suggestion. We're open to advice. But if God command thee so, we're coming to number three here. Number three is uh, the short-sighted consideration of Jethro before Moses. Uh, we need to read the whole story. And sometimes the whole story is not in one chapter of the Bible. The whole story might be in the next chapter. 
The whole story might be in another book of the Bible. Let's come now to Numbers chapter 10, and we're reading from verse 29. We're looking at the short-sighted consideration of Jethro before Moses in Numbers chapter 10, verse 29. And Moses said unto Hobab, the son of Reguel the Midianite, Moses' father, in law, understand, you know, many of us have more than one name. We have this name, that name, that name. The name we're known by in our family circle. And the name we're known by in our professional office. It says over there, Moses said unto Obab, the son of Reuel, and the, the Midianite, Moses' father-in-law, the same person, we are journeying unto the place of which the Lord said, I will give it to you. Come thou with us and we will do thee good for the Lord has spoken good concerning Israel. Look at verse 30. In verse 30 and he said unto him I will not go. Jethro you see there's a good cause yes I do. You see that you are favored. God chose your son-in-law to take these people out of Egypt, to take them to a promised land. Yes, I do. And you see the great manifestation of power. He told you already all that was done in Egypt. Yes, I've heard. And you see the great manifestation. And God, the God of heaven, became so intimate and present with your son-in-law. What a great position you have. What a great offer you have. Have. The Lord has spoken great things who came about us. Come with us. And he said, I will not go, but I will depart to my own land. A priest of the Midianites. He didn't have the Abrahamic covenant. He didn't have the Abrahamic promise. He didn't have the great promise that the Father had given to his people. And then he was invited and he said, I will not go now, counselor. You come to counsel us. You see, this is a good ministry, and this is a great project, and you see that I'm appointed to do that, and then you come to counsel, and I say, wonderful, you know, we need you. If you have such wisdom, if you have such insight, and if you can, within a few days, you discover and discern this, come with us. You'll be a great help to us. No. I don't want to be a great help to you. I want to go back to my own land. He was short-sighted. When people come to counsel us, let's measure them. Let's size them up. They're encouraging us to consecrate. Let's size them up. They're encouraging us to delegate. Let's size them up. Let's measure them. Let's know who they are and what they offer and what they are willing to do. He said, I will not go. I will depart to my own land and to my kindred. Look at verse 31. Verse 31. And he said, leave us not. I pray thee, for as much as thou knowest how we are were to encamp in the wilderness, and thou mayest be to us instead of eyes. It was, that was dangerous. Now, the Lord, when they led each age, gave them the pillar of cloud and the pillar of fire, the cloud by day, the fire by night, and it guided them. And any time that pillar of cloud, that pillar of fire rose up, they'll move and then he will be going to search a place of rest for them god was their eyes and god was their leader and god was the one guiding them to the place they ought to be unfortunately before jethro came 
Moses did not show any sign of uncertainty, any sign of insecurity. He knew the cloud was there, the fire was there, leading them. And he knew that God was their eyes, leading them to the right place. But you know, when this counselor now came and gave a good advice, the heart and the mind of Moses shifted a little. And he said, you know, you'll be eyes for us. We don't have to look at the cloud now. What is he leading us? We don't need to look at the fire now. What is he leading us? You'll be eyes for us. Let's be very careful. Uh, before you met uh, Mr. Counselor, before you met Mrs. Uh, Counselor, you were praying and you were looking up to God. And you knew how God used to lead you. Now, Mr. Brother Counselor is now come. Sister, Mrs. Counselor is now come. And the little, little things you can even take to God. And you have been taking to God. And you have been depending upon the Lord. Every little thing now you want to see Jethro. Be my eye. I don't have to pray. Be my eye. I don't have to discern. Be my eye. I don't have to have the Spirit of God. And thou mayest be to us instead of eyes. Even with all that proposal, look at verse 32. In verse 32, it says, and it shall be, if thou go with us, yea, it shall be that what goodness the Lord shall do unto us, the same we will do unto thee. Jethro, you know what? We eat angels' food, manna from heaven. And as you come with us, you will eat angels' food. Jethro, that did not impress him. And then we also drink water out of the rock. And as we go on, moving on, we might even have honey out of the rock. That did not impress Jethro. The counselor that is quick to counsel, quick to encourage and quick to push us go on go on go on go and evangelize go and do it depend upon the lord okay come by my side what i eat you'll eat what revelation i have you'll have and the good things the lord has promised to us will also overflow and spill over to you the man was not impressed. So, when we think about these uh, people, Jethro, Counselor, this and that, what's their spiritual weight? What's their spiritual value? How sold to God are they? Are they willing to take the step with us and then go to the promised land with us? Look at verse 33. In verse 33 it says, and they departed from the mountain of the Lord three days' journey. And the ark of the covenant of the Lord went before them. Moses, you don't lose anything by Jethro going back. It's not willing to be your eyes. It shouldn't even be your eyes. It shouldn't be the one to search out the land for you. The Lord himself will guide you. And don't feel that you are missing anything or missing anyone. When that vacuum is there, when that vacancy is there, and you say, oh, if Jethro had been with me, God is with you. I said, God is with you. And he is the all-sufficient God. He will guide you. He will lead you. More than Jethro or any human counselor can lead you, the Lord will guide you every step of the way in Jesus' name. Hey, look at this, look at this. It says, the Lord, the ark of the covenant of the Lord went before them in three days' journey to search out a resting place for them. To search out a resting place for them. You will not miss the guidance of the Lord. We're coming to point number two here. Point number two, the most exalted word of Jehovah. Look at what we're doing. We are closing the door now at Jethro. He doesn't want to go. Bye-bye. Take your mind away from that. 
Take your concentration, concentration away from that. Don't feel the absence and the vacuum and be going on as if you're an orphan. Father-in-law will not go with us. He has good counsel. He has a good understanding. He has good experience. He will not go with us. Remove that from your mind. It's a human being. The God of heaven will be sufficient for you. The most exalted word of Jehovah. We're looking at Deuteronomy chapter 4 and we're looking at verse 6. Deuteronomy chapter 4 verse 6. Keep therefore and do them. For this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the nations which shall hear of all these statutes and say, Surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. And then in verse 7, in verse 7 it says, For what nation is there so great who has God so near unto them as the Lord our God is in all things that we call upon him for? Look at verse 8. In verse 8 it says, And what nation is there so great? that has statutes and judgments so righteous as all this law, all this word which I said before you this day in verse 9 in verse 9 it tells us only take heed to thyself and keep thy soul diligently lest thou forget the things which thine eyes have seen and lest thou depart uh, lest thee depart from thine heart all the days of thy life but teach them thy sons and thy sons sons then in verse 10 in verse 10 he tells us especially the day that the, that thou studest before the Lord thy God in Horeb when the Lord said unto me gather me the people together and I will make them hear my words I will make them hear my words. The door of Jethro is closed. The door of Jehovah is open. And sometimes when the human door closes and we cannot get any input from them, we stay there and we're knocking at the closed door. Jethro, come. Jethro, speak. Jethro, we need you again. The door from Jehovah has now opened and he says, hear my words that they may learn to fear me all the days that they shall live upon the earth and that they may teach their children. Let's look at three things here. Number one, we're looking at the guiding word of Jehovah for Moses, the guiding word, the word that will guide Moses all through the journey. Number three, number two, is the glorious wonder of Jehovah with ministers. Number three, is the great work of Jehovah for his ministry. Let's look at number one. Number one, we're looking at the guiding, we're looking at the guiding word of Jehovah for Moses. Look at Exodus chapter 4, and we're looking at uh, verse 12. It says, now therefore go, and I will be with thy mouth. That's sufficient. That's great, the God of heaven, the creator of the heavens and the earth, and the one that knows the future and knows the past, and the one that can do all things, the maker of heaven. And I said, I will go, I will be with thy mouth, and teach thee what thou shalt say. Anywhere you go, I know Pharaoh. I know what Pharaoh is thinking. I know his limitation. I know what will terrify him. I know what will encourage him to. I know what can turn him around. And I, and I know him. And I know everything he thinks about. And I know what he's planning against you. And I will go with you every time you appear before Pharaoh. And I will teach you what thou shalt say. Praise the Lord. 
anywhere we go, anywhere we're invited, anywhere we have to open our mouth, it says, open your mouth wide and I will feel it. You believe that? You will put the word in your mouth. Number one, what thou shalt say. Look at verse 16. In verse 16, it says, and he shall be be thy spokesman, that's Aaron, will be the spokesman of uh, Moses before unto the people. And he shall be, even he shall be to thee a stage of a mouth, and thou shall be to him a stage of God. You will hear, and what you hear, you will tell him, and what you will do, that I will confirm in your life. That, that, that's, that's good enough. That God says, what you'll say, I'll put in your mouth. What you'll do, I'll reveal unto you. Look at Numbers chapter 12. We're reading from verse 7. In Numbers chapter 12, reading from verse 7, my servant Moses is not so, who is faithful in all mine house. Look at verse 8. It says in verse 8, with him will I speak mouth to mouth mouth to mouth. Uh, you see, when, uh, you know, human uh, people are detached from us and they have uh, this withdrawal uh, kind of uh, strategy so that you will feel when I'm not there and when I don't talk and when I don't communicate with you, when I don't counsel you the way I used to do, then you will know my importance. No, we will know the importance of God because now God will come in and fill all the empty space because God now says, I will talk with Moses mouth to mouth. Even apparently not in dark speeches and, and the similitude of the Lord shall he behold. Wherefore then were ye not afraid to speak against my servant Moses? Look at Hosea chapter 12. We're reading from verse 13. Hosea chapter 12 verse 13 and by a prophet Moses not by Moses and Jethro by a prophet the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt everything he needed the miracle working power he needed the signs and the wonders he needed the faith he needed the prayer he needed the victory he needed God give him all and that man with God you and God you are the majority you will not fail he will not disappoint you when you come to a crossroad he will be there. And it says, by a prophet, the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt, and by a prophet, he was, was he preserved. That is, all those Israelites, by the ministry of the prophet, going from day to day and month to month and year to year, they were preserved. And then you say, I wish I have a Moses like that. Well, you have the whole Bible. And you have all that God revealed unto Moses. You have Joshua, you have the judges, you have all those kings, you have the Psalms. And then you have all the major prophets. And now we have the words of Jesus. And we have everything the Father knows what we'll need is there, right there in the Bible. And as we love that Bible, read that Bible, believe that Bible, and we say, Lord, speak to me that I may speak the Lord through his word. He will speak to you in Jesus' name. We're looking at uh, number two here. Number two, we're looking at the glorious wonder of Jehovah with 
ministers. Look at what, um, you know, Moses had, the wonders that he had, the spirit that he had, the power that he had. We're looking at Numbers chapter 11, and we're reading from verse uh, 16. Numbers chapter 11, verse 16, and the Lord said unto Moses, Gather unto me seventy men of the elders of Israel. What? Jethro said, I should divide into thousands, into hundreds, into tens, into fifties, and then search for leaders and get them to bear the body with you. What's God saying? God is saying unto Moses, Get unto me seventy men. All I need, seventy men of the elders of Israel, and whom thou knowest to be elders of the people and officers over them, and bring them unto the tabernacle of the congregation, that they may stand there with thee. After Jethro has given us counseling and has told us all the and administrative nuances what we need to do the details uh, we need to go back to god god what are you saying to 70 men bring them near what are they to do look at verse 17 in verse 17 it says i will come down and talk with thee there and i will take of the spirit which is upon thee and i will put it upon them that was missing in the council of jethro natural counseling good counseling normal counseling but the spirit the indwelling of the spirit was missing but now god said get those 70 men let them be with thee. I, the God of heaven, I will take of the spirit which is upon thee, and I will put it upon them, and they shall bear the burden of the people with thee. Without the spirit, without the power of the spirit, without the enablement of the spirit, they cannot bear any burden. They'll just be natural men using natural skill to help you. And that natural help is not enough. It's a spiritual work. And it's a spectacular thing that we need to be able to bear the burden. And now God comes to Moses and he said, I'll take of the spirit. That's make, what makes you thrive. That's what makes you do what you are doing. That's the power. And that is the pivot. And that is the support with you and under you. The spirit in you that will quicken you. And that will reveal the mind of God to you every time. That's what you have that makes you do what you are doing. And if anybody is going to help you, look at those men. Check up about their salvation, about their character about their behavior, then, then bring them with you, and I will give the Spirit unto them, and they shall bear the burden of the people with thee, and thou, for that thou bear each not thyself alone. We're coming to point number three here. In point number three, is the great work of Jehovah with his ministry as you look at uh, moses and you look at everything that eventually he did and the ministry that he carried on you'll see the final thing is that the spirit of god was with him the power of the lord was with him and the power and the signs and the wonders were with him a great ministry and uh, what uh, jethro could not do for him uh, God did for him. And what the Jethro's around you cannot do for you, God will do for you. He lifts you up. 
He'll make you strong. He'll make you mighty and powerful. And you will even be surprised. Is this me? No, it's not you. It's the spirit and the power of God working with you in Jesus' name. Look at Deuteronomy chapter 34. And I'm reading from verse 10. Deuteronomy chapter 34. Reading from verse 10. And there arose not a prophet since in Israel. Jethro would have taken the credit. I was whispering to his ears what to do every time. I was telling him the step he ought to take every time. I was encouraging him every time. I was building him up and lifting him up every time. He would have taken the credit, but now the credit belongs to God because what man could not do. The power of the Lord and the presence of the Lord did in his life. There arose not a prophet since in Israel like unto Moses whom the Lord knew face to face. And then in verse 11, in verse 11 it says, in all the signs and the wonders which the Lord sent him to do in the land of Egypt to Pharaoh and to all his servants and to all all his land. Then in verse 12, in verse 12 it says, and in all that mighty hand and in all the great terror which Moses showed in the sight of all Israel. Moses is gone, but you are here. You will do what he has called you to do. Beyond what you see today and beyond what you have accomplished, God will use you, you will accomplish in Jesus' name. Don't belittle yourself. Understand, if God has called you, if God has chosen you, whatever you were in the past, your future will be higher and greater and better and more progressive than you were in the past in Jesus' name. And after you have finished, as it was written concerning Moses, a good story will be written concerning you. That everywhere you went, the help of God was there, the power of the Lord was there, the encouragement, the enablement, enablement of the Lord was there and in your family there was no man and there was no woman like that man in the family, that woman in the family that God has raised up. He will fulfill it in your life. It is not what you are yesterday. It is not what you are today. The future is unbelievable. We're coming to point number three now. Point number three, we're looking at the more excellent way in Jesus. We've seen Jethro, we've seen Jehovah. Now we come to Christ Jesus, the more excellent way. It's the way, the truth, and the life. And we have come to the Father. We have come to salvation. We have come into service because we are following that way. We look at the steps and we are following after the footsteps of the Lord. Let's look at Christ here. We are looking at Hebrews chapter 8 and we are reading from verse 5. Hebrews chapter 8 verse 5 who serve unto the example and shadow of heavenly things as Moses was admonished of God when he was about to make the tabernacle. For see, saith he, that thou make all things according to the pattern showed thee in the mount. Look at verse 6. In verse 6 it says, But now, as he obtained a more excellent ministry, by how much also he is the mediator of a better covenant which was established upon better promises. Now, when the better covenant, now we have the better promises. And now we're going to have in every life a better performance through Christ in Jesus' name. The more excellent way in Jesus. We're looking at three things here. Number one, number one, the effectual words of Jesus above Moses, above the word of Moses. Number two, the evangelistic work of Jesus through all members. And number three, the earnest watchman with Jesus as model. Look at number one. Number one is the effectual word 
of Jesus above that of Moses. It tells us in Hebrews chapter 1, we're reading from verse 1. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 1, it says, God who at sundry times and in diverse manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets. Verse 2. In verse 2 it says, as in these last days spoken unto us by his son. He has spoken to us now all the words we need to hear that will make us be everything we ought to be. He speaks to us by His Son, whom He has appointed heir of all things, by whom also He made the worlds. In verse 3, He tells us, He says that that Jesus is the brightness of His glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power he will uphold you when he had by himself purged our sins and sat down on the right hand of majesty on high look at verse 4 there in verse 4 it says be made so much better than the angels better than Moses better than Aaron, better than all the high priests of Israel, and better than all the helpers and counselors in Israel, and even better than the angels, as he has by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. Look at Matthew chapter 24 verse 35. In Matthew chapter 24 verse 35, here are the words of Jesus, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. The same word that built up Peter, James, John, and the apostles, that word is still tenable today. And that word is still legal tender in the course in the bank of heaven today. He has given us that same word. And it is the word that saves, that sanctifies. It is the word that makes sin fulfill all the promises in our lives. And it says, my word shall not pass away. That word will have power and effect in every one of our lives in Jesus' name. And look at number two here. Number two here is the evangelistic work of Jesus through all members. It's not just that we have this selected few, all members now, members of his body, members of his church. We have that work now because it is Christ that lives in us the hope of glory and the source of all power to do everything. Uh, we're looking at uh, John chapter 17, verse 17. In John chapter 17, verse 17, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Have you noticed that as you join other parts of the scriptures, save them through thy truth? Thy word is truth. Have you noticed? Heal them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Empower them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Everything we have from the Lord is through those words of Jesus that will never pass away. He saves us. He sanctifies us. He fills us with the Holy Ghost. He heals us. He sends out his word and he delivers them from all the afflictions. Everything now is done as we receive and as we believe that truth. Thy word is Look at verse 18. In verse 18, as thou hast sent me into the world, even so have I also sent them into the world. The Father sent the Lord Jesus Christ with the fullness of his revelation. And Christ has passed on that revelation unto us. And as we move on with that word, we cannot fail you will succeed and the work of the lord will prosper in our hands in jesus name look at chapter 8 of acts acts chapter 8 we're reading from verse 4 therefore they that was scattered abroad went everywhere not apostles all the members all of them they were scattered abroad they went everywhere preaching 
the world is no more like you know the only the leaders of thousands and the leaders of uh, hundreds and leaders of fifties and the leaders of ten everyone now the whole body of Christ all the members we have each one has what it takes all we need to do is to believe that the word is in us and as the father sent the Lord Jesus Christ he has saved us now and people are going to get saved through us they will get into the kingdom strong and stable in Jesus name I come to number three here number three is the earnest watchman with Jesus as model the earnest watchman with Jesus as model in uh, Mark chapter 1 we're reading from verse 37 Mark chapter 1 verse 37 and when they had found him they said unto him all men seek thee and then in verse 38 he says and he said unto them let us go into the next towns that I may preach there also for therefore came I forth let us go that was the zeal he manifested the earnestness he manifested and that same earnestness is now in you and now in me and now in us all together in Jesus name and then in verse 39 he didn't, he didn't only have the intention let us go he also backed it up with action our intention as we hear the word of God must be backed up by action and he preached in their synagogue throughout all Galilee and cast out devils your time has come my time has come look at John chapter 20 verse 21 John chapter 20 and we're looking at verse 21 it says then said Jesus unto them peace be unto you I thought you say good good amen as my father have sent me even so send I you as my father have sent me even so sent I you is our model the father sent him and with zeal and earnestness he did what ought to be done you will do what he has called us to do mark chapter 16 we're reading from verse 15 mark chapter 16 verse 15 and he said unto them go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature every creature you do your part i do my part we all do our part the work will be done and then in verse 16 it says he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved but he that believeth not shall be done verse 17 and these signs shall follow them who I said these signs shall follow them who who are the people that believe you believe you believe that what Jesus said about you is right what he says you can do you will do what what he says you will go you will go and he says he gives you all power and nothing shall by any means hurt you what he said concerning me will be done say it for yourself believe that you'll overcome every stumbling block before you in jesus name it says and this i shall follow them that believe in my name shall they cast out devils they shall speak with new tongues verse 18 verse 18 says and they shall take up serpents and if they drink any deadly thing it shall not hurt them it shall not hurt them He'll bless your water, he'll bless your bread. And nothing will cut short your life in Jesus' name. They shall lay their hands on the sick and they shall 
recover. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Whatever you have done with your hand, writing, building, molding, dressing, if you have not done this, this one is waiting for you, you will do this one. You will lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. And then in verse 19, verse 19 says, So then, after the Lord had spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven and sat on the right hand of God. Verse 20, in verse 20 it says, And they went forth, and they went forth. The, the success is in going forth. When the Father sent Jesus, he came forth. He came down here. And now he said, And the Father has sent me, even so have I sent you, you will go forth. And they preached everywhere. Have you noticed? They preached everywhere. That's not talking of the apostles alone. Those apostles stayed in Jerusalem. But the people that went everywhere, these people went everywhere. And then it says, and the Lord walking with them, the Lord walking with them and confirming the word, confirming the word is not confirming the volume of their voice it's not confirming their stature it's not confirming their whether they are men or women it's not confirming whether they are brothers or sisters it's not confirming their position it's not confirming their human authority it's not confirming any other thing the word that walks in my mouth will walk in your mouth because it's not looking at our title, it's not looking at our stature, it's looking at the word. You say the word, God will back you up. I say the word, God will back me up. Confirming the word was signs following. What do you have at the end of the verse? Amen. Amen for every one of us. Let, let's rise up now and talk to the Lord and pray. The Lord himself, who has sent the Lord Jesus Christ, has also sent us. And he wants us to do what he has called us to do. And this work of the Lord will be confirmed and will prosper in every one of our lives. We have the counsel of Jethro. We have the wisdom of Jethro, the word of Jehovah. And we have the wonders of our Lord Jesus Christ coming to the provision the Lord has made for you. The Lord will make sure you do not fail. We must now 